asked me about three weeks ago if on the week that I was scheduling the King's Inch whiskey, I thought we might have a king or not, I'd be like, where's this going? Uh, yeah, it's been a funny old, uh, funny old week in the UK. Uh, we lost a monarch. That's... That doesn't happen every day. In fact, it hasn't happened in quite some time. Um, yeah, uh, her coffin left Edinburgh today. Um, where I'm working at the minute, our head office um, overlooks part of the route that they were taking on the way to the airport. Um, it's just it's just a very odd thing, you know, it's just a very strange thing. Um, so yeah, that's got absolutely nothing to do with this video, but I thought, I kind of felt like I had to sort of dip it in there. <laughs> um, yeah, Queen's dead, just in case you were living under a rock. Um, cool, so, not cool, but you get what I mean. Um, we are gonna be doing a whiskey today because life goes on. Um, now, I was originally gonna release this last week and then obviously events happened where I was like, maybe hang back. Uh, it's been a fair few days and obviously we're under, you know, you know, period of mourning and all the rest of it, but um, one of the things that I have learned from this whole process is that life should be allowed to carry on to a certain extent because there's... Do I wade into this one? Things have gone a little over the top, I feel. So a few, there's a few things that have maybe been a little heavy-handed, and we'll leave it there. So I'm going to have some whiskey. So that's what we're going to do. Now, there's going to be people... <laughs> I mean, Nigel Farage a couple of weeks ago was the, the hot topic, and now this. I'm going to... Oh, I'm in trouble. Um, now then, one fun thing about this is I have to have the bottle for this one. Isn't that exciting? This is the Glasgow Tequila Cask Finish, the 1770, the one that everyone bought. Uh, there was two limited releases uh, that 1770 let out. Uh, the other was a petered cognac finish, which still sounds delightful. Still kicking around, uh, purely because this is new and exciting. And we are five-year-olds, and we're like, oh, the new exciting thing. I... Have I tried a tequila finish before? I've definitely tried a mezcal finish before. I've tried the Dewar's Blend mezcal finish. They were one of the first ones to get that out. A very brief finishing period, I believe, that that had had. But it's still a finishing period, you know. It still does the still does the job. And it's Dewar's. It's pretty nice stuff, I'm not going to lie. This is not that. This is... Um, this is a full match. No, um, sorry, beg your pardon. Matured in first fill, ex bourbon cask, and finished in a tequila cask. There we go. It answers it on the label before I get myself wrong. Uh, cask number eighteen slash nine nine two. Would assume that's the number of the tequila cask. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Um, batch number one, two hundred ninety five bottles of this were released. It's fifty five percent. Um, no color and non chill filtered. So all of the good stuff. I've been getting to know this. Um, oh, there we go, a bit of AS, AS, ASMR, that's what it is. Oh, she's a beauty, this one. Spoilers ahead. She's a, she's a lovely one. I've had a, a few nips out of this one, and I've, I've really been getting on board with this. I've tried all the Glasgow's of the core range. I haven't had a chance to try their Sauternes sort of release finish from last year. Really wanted to get my hands on that because I love a Sauternes. Sort of Turns out I'm quite a big fan of the Glasgow's as well. Um... So that's fun. Uh, it draws its water from the same the same source that Tenant's Lager gets its water from, so there's a fun connection. Um, I can read a bit of the waffle on the back if you like. Uh, handcrafted in our copper pot stills, Glasgow 1770 single malt, combines the finest barley with exceptionally pure water of Loch Katrine, and is distilled with passion and dedication by our team of distillers. I want a whiskey that's distilled with malaise and ennui, just once. Actually, Ockentoshan, but anyway, actually, no, that's not fair. Ockentoshan's lovely, it's what they do after to it that's disgraceful. Um, only ever natural colour. Glasgow 1770 is a single malt of sublime quality that continues the rise in a new whiskey era in Glasgow. And don't we know it? Um, last week, obviously, we covered the King's Inch, which kind of kicked this whole weird conversation off. And this week, we're still in Glasgow. Um... Actually, not last week, it's this week's video, isn't it? I'm doing an, an ancillary video in addition. Time's weird at the minute. Time is an odd thing. Um, well, one thing I did want to note about this bottle, just before we get into the whiskey, which is already poured and having a bit of, having a bit of a breathe, I always assumed these bottles were round. I didn't realise this was my first time holding one, and I know that it's changed the size format, so maybe the 50 CLs were round and this wasn't, but this, it, it's, it's oval. I brought this up in, I think it was in the Nigel Farage livestream 
again, yeah, sorry, not sorry. Um, but it's not actually round, it's, it's an oval. It's a beautiful, beautiful bottle, you know, it's very um, evocative of glass corduroy. There we go, that's, that's what we're going to call that. Um, yeah, I just always assumed that these were perfectly round bottles, and they are not. Anyway, let's get to the actual whiskey. So we've got the whiskey in the glass. It's a lovely straw gold colour for folks that are interested in those kinds of things. On the nose, it's, it's quite peppery. There's a fair bit of vanilla. Again, I know vanilla. Maybe I just naturally gravitate towards vanilla-y whiskies. Maybe that's it. There is a, a chlorophyll element. Um, I was listening to uh, Dram Faces podcast about a month ago, and somebody mentioned about a grassy nosing note, uh, and then somebody else chimed in with, I hate that they talk about grassy, and then they start talking about what kind of grass is it that you're cutting, when did you cut it, and I was just like, there is a point of specificity that is just not necessary. It's grassy. And I, I think we all know what that means, but feel free to be a dickhead in the comments about that if you want. And as it opens, as I get used to it rather, rather than it opening up, as I get used to it, um, there's more kind of like fresh green apple, little pear in there. A little bit more white pepper coming through. I don't want to say floral, but I have a big old bouquet of lilies over there, which was a stupid thing to do in hindsight. There's probably people watching this now being like, this amateur. And, I mean, yeah, if this is your first video, hello, it's, we're a wreck here. Join in. Uh, have I done the intro yet? Hello and welcome to John Drinks, the channel where I try and have a drink. And today we're looking at Glasgow 1770 tequila cask. I knew I'd forgotten something. Right, let's go in with a, let's go in with a, with a, with a taste. I get the horrible feeling I never pressed record on this. Did I press record? <laughs> I did press record. Good. Oh god, I've been talking for a minute now. Oh, actually, I've been talking for seven and a half minutes and I haven't even gotten to what the bloody whiskey tastes like yet. Well done, me. Oh. There's a lovely honey sweetness from it, kind of like set honey, that kind of chewy, kind of is that okay looking honey that actually is delicious and really nice on toast. I don't know, I always, I always used to get the set honey as a kid because I was fascinated by it. I was like, what, what is this strange stuff? And I'd always just be... I was an odd child. I'm a very strange adult, to be fair. So, I mean, you can imagine what I was like as a kid. Oh, high on sugar, basically, was the answer. There's a bright, slightly citrus note. I'm going to go with, like, orange peels on that one. It's a beautiful kind of bright, happy, orangey flavour. It's a little tropical, there's a little like, uh, almost like a, a hint of pineapple to it. There we go, there's a new taste now, I don't often talk about pineapples. Maybe I just don't eat enough pineapples. I'll tell you what, leave me a comment down below, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? There we go, that's one way to start a war. I'm going to save the scone scone pronunciation war for another video. Although, you know, feel free to chime in now if you want. It's weirdly reminding me of, this is a very specific thing. There's a company called Hills Biscuits. Go with me here. Uh, in addition to making the Benighted Custard Cream, they make variants on the theme, um, much in the same way that like, McVitie's is like, churning out different flavours of hobnobs and stuff now. I keep a close eye on biscuit science, incidentally. I should have made that my gimmick, but no, here we are drinking whiskey at... What time is it? Oh god, that's desperate, isn't it? Don't want to know. You don't want to know what time it is. Um, but they also manufacture Hills Biscuits. Not the, um, They also manufacture orange creams and strawberry creams, and you find them in like news agents a lot. Uh, and one of them, they swapped out the biscuit instead to digestive rather than the kind of shortbread -y biscuit they've got on custard creams. And it's kind of reminding me of the strawberry cream. There we are. That's where I was going with that. The sweetness kind of builds the more you drink of it as well. It's getting a little butterscotchy, a little like Werther's Originals. But I will say as well, it's quite hot. Um, you can tell that it's 55%. You're kind of like, oh, I'm breathing fire here. I'm going to stick some water in it. Now, I had a pip 
pet kicking around, and I can't for the life of me find where I've put it, so I'm just going to have to kind of be careful here. Uh, I said I'd do this off screen to try and save face, but there we go, that's fine. Just a little dribble. Um, that'll do nicely. Doubling down on the strawberry cream thing, actually, because that's coming through on the nose now. That's There's a wonderful kind of <laughs> slightly artificial strawberry cream scent to it. Uh, and cause, because everything's vanilla to me, the, the biscuit is in there as well, in the form of vanilla. Yeah, oh, that was a good shout, actually. I'm really... Oh, I'm a fucking genius. It's a little bit of like an, an orange, orange zest, kind of a citrusiness. Is it like orange creams? Because they also exist. Chocolate orange bourbons exist. Or bourbons, I should say, not bourbons. But chocolate orange bourbon probably does also exist. Bourbon bourbon exists, or bourbon bourbon exists. We've done that on the channel. This. Do you know, I was expecting this to be a, a lovely little extra video, and it's just a train wreck, isn't it, from start to finish? <laughs> Hill Strawberry Grooms are getting a big shout out today, but I tell you what, that's what it is. Um, I like any of the tequila. The tequila. Uh, if you gave this to me, I would never guess that it was a tequila cask finish. And some of the point with finishes sometimes isn't that you're kind of like, oh, that's Ruby Ports, oh, that's Sauterne. Sometimes you can tell, uh, but other times it's like, oh, it's just it's adding a little something to it, um, which is quite fun. Is this a gimmick? No. No, it's not a gimmick because it's a delightful whiskey. Um, it becomes really soft and <sighs> caramel, vanilla, sweet. A little grassy, a little spicy, still plenty of like white pepper. You can, the strength is still coming through plentifully, so you're getting plenty of um, plenty of bang for your buck, if nothing else. I want a strawberry cream biscuit now. Anyway, I'm going to wrap that up because uh, all I have in the house is Abernethy's, and that'll have to do. They're actually lovely as well, to be fair. Why is this about biscuits? It's about biscuits and politics. This is a terrible whiskey review. Absolutely dreadful. It's no wonder it didn't end up in the top ten. No surprises there, to be fair. Um, yeah, that's been... I'm going to rest that there and hopefully it won't fall. That's been the Glasgow 1770 Tequila Cask Finish. Let me know down below. Cask Finishers, what are your favourites? What do you like? What do you avoid? Is there anything out there that you would wish could be used, or you would like to see used in the future that nobody goes near yet? Is there something that's really obscure? Let me know these things. Uh, thumb the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you aren't already, uh, and thank you very much for joining me, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else.